yeah good evening everyone see the first question what are the reasons for introduction of frbm act 2003 discuss critically its salient features and their effectiveness take a couple of minutes time yeah good point rajni so see the questions see the question what are the what were the reasons for introduction of frbm act 2003 discuss critically its salient features and their effectiveness so the examiner is asking you frbm act why it was then salient features and then effectiveness try to break down the question like this so that you will not miss any dimension so apart from this you have to write intro way forward and conclusion if you cover all these dimensions the probability of you scoring is uh, probability of you scoring very high is there so what is the introduction why frbm was introduced frbm act was introduced in 2003 for having more fiscal prudence fiscal prudence and discipline in the state spending here state means both central and uh, the states okay so be careful about it here it's a state is a political jargon which we are trying to use so in the body the main aim of frbm is to reduce fiscal deficit okay next what next what is this thing first part of the question is reasons for introducing frbm act so what are the main reasons for introducing frbm act to promote fiscal discipline to check the fiscal deficit to control the revenue expenditure to check the borrowings of the government and to promote economic growth and stability and this is the first part then what are the salient features salient features obviously you need to write the salient features means the targets what are the various targets target says that the fiscal deficit fiscal deficit should be should be within what is the target what is the target 3% 3% that is the latest one in 2003 what was it yes or no this 3% was given by nk singh committee yes or no shanda prasad yes sir 
Three percent by NK Singh Company, but I don't have idea. Two thousand three levels. So what is the question? Sale and features of two thousand three. They are asking, right? Okay. Yes. So the the revenue deficit, the revenue deficit. How much should be the revenue deficit? Zero. Zero. Effective revenue deficit of zero is also not acceptable. Sorry, the primary deficit. The primary deficit of zero also is not acceptable. What is primary deficit? Anyone? Fiscal deficit minus interest payments. Ah? Uh? Fiscal deficit minus interest payments. Yes. If it is zero, means what it means? We are simply borrowing to pay the interest. Understood? Yes, sir. But primary deficit means fiscal deficit minus interest payments. If is equal to zero, that means fiscal deficit is equal to interest payments. Did you understand? So even zero is not desirable. Okay. I'm not getting any response. Why people are confused or what? No, sir. Clear, sir. Reducing freebies and improving tax to GDP ratio. So these are the salient features. Then, what are the, next? What is the last last part of the question? Effectiveness. So how effective has been the FRBM? That is that they are asking. Yes, it has been a torchlight in guiding various governments towards fiscal prudence encouraged governments in reducing subsidies which are not required which are not required made government conscious regarding borrowings track on the revenue expenditure okay so these are some of the important things so what are the drawbacks frequent relaxations to FRMB, FRM, FRBM rules, deviation during significant economic impacts like COVID-19 recession etc okay and election freebies impacting states frbm targets and no standard convention for choosing 3.5% target then way forward fiscal deficit is not 
डिजायरेबल इंप्लीमेंट एनके सिंह कमिटी रिकमेंडेशन इनिशियली थ्री परसेंट एंड देर बाय रेड्यूस एवरी इयर रेड्यूस सब्सिडी बिल इंक्रीज टैक्स टू जी डी पी रेशियो स्ट्रीमलाइन जी एस टी कलेक्शन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेशन रिफॉर्म्स and in the conclusion as india aspires to become a 5 trillion dollar economy the stability is very important hence the frbm rules need to be adopted as soon as possible of course without compromising on the growth project clear yes sir so it's a very big very big answer lot of points so based on the demand of the question and the number of marks it has been awarded you pick up some of the important points and write okay yes reasons features yeah okay ways and means advances yes okay you write about the other targets also rajni like okay sir. revenue deficit primary deficit this these are also important targets yes escape clause yes this is a correct word many governments have tried to use the escape clause including during covid 19 good good answer rajni sir mahesh hari is waiting to join sir okay <coughs> fine see the next question industrial growth has lagged behind in overall growth of gdp in the post reform period please be careful what do you mean by post reform period here the examiner is asking you about 1991 after 1991 in fact okay after 1991 they say industrial growth has lagged behind in the overall growth of gdp give reasons okay how far recent changes in the industrial policy are capable of increasing the industrial growth good question take couple of minutes yeah okay good points rajni you have covered most of the points so see the question again industrial growth has lagged behind in the overall growth of gdp in the post reform period so this is a statement okay for this you have to give reasons so giving reasons is the first part 
how far the recent changes are capable of in, in increasing the industrial growth second part and then you are giving the drawbacks here recent changes then you'll give way forward and conclusion is the framework clear sir huh? yes sir so industrial growth okay what are the reasons okay what are the reasons first part is the reasons for lagging reasons for lagging and then what they are asking recent changes in industrial policy recent changes how can they promote industry to improve and then conclusion way forward and conclusion in way forward if you have any other solutions you can write them so in the introduction you can write the after liberalization in 1991 till date the industry that is the secondary sector secondary sector sector contributes to roughly 18 to 22 percent of our gdp okay so this shows that it has lagged behind the service sector so what are the reasons for lagging behind what are the reasons for lagging behind so what are the reasons behind lagging uh, behind for industry sector in particular is mainly issues of r and d and technology okay and then labor loss okay efficiency and productivity of capital issues of markets and connectivity to markets issues regarding infrastructure lack of skilled manpower and also sometimes government policies sometimes unconducive so these are the various issues which are making the industry lag behind so what are the changes which made it now more competitive or if they can so the question is what are the changes which can make it more comp capable of increasing industrial growth so what are the recent changes after the government has come so you can write various initiatives so recent changes is make in india startup stand up india atmanirbhar bharat fdi increase in almost all sectors and labor law reforms promoting ease of doing business 
and capital spending. I'm just continuing those points. Capital spending like PM Gati Shakti. So, and then sometimes giving single window clearance. TS I pass in states like Telangana. One district, one product. Okay, of UP. Okay. And uh, National Industrial Manufacturing Zone across countries to promote says model for manufacturing industries manufacturing industries so these are some of the reforms and then reducing corporate taxes reducing corporate taxes and then giving this uh, subsidies for importing machinery importing machinery so all these are prominent initiatives so what is the these are the government initiatives way forward skilling of manpower as per industry expectation and we can use here the national skill development machine mission okay and then promoting msme which are which employ maximum number of people through preference in procurement and PPP model where land acquisition is an issue promoting private investments through subsidies then conclude the industry sector has huge potential to employ many youth and can act as a medium to utilize our demographic dividend. need of the hour is to tap this sector okay yes sir what is this five to six percent shanta prasad industrial growth rate sir mm. Mm. Instead of that, you write its contribution to GDP. That is much more catchy, right? Yes, sir. You can maybe, of course, I'm not denying this conclusion. It is good. You use it in conclusion. Okay. Sir. Here, 
it will be much more advantageous if you use it in conclusion. Okay, land loss. Yes, infrastructure issues. Good. FDI opened. Strategic disinvestment space sector. Yeah. In conclusion, you can also write if industrial sector is really uh, privatized. You can recently write about this particular, uh, what is it? That company which recently launched the private satellites, Skyroot Aerospace, right? You can give the example of this. You can give the example of this. Shakti Shakti, yes, National Association. Here you can mention NIMS also. Yeah, IBC is a good example. GST, corporate tax. Atmanipur Bharat. Good. See the next question. How globalization has led to the reduction of employment in formal sector of the Indian economy is increased for informalization detrimental to the development of the country. Take a couple of minutes. Yeah. So see the question. How globalization has led to the reduction of employment in the formal sector of the Indian economy First part of the question, increased in informalization detrimental to the development of the country. Second part of the question, okay, obviously you have to give intro, write these two solutions and then conclusion. Clear? Good points, Rajni. So the question is goes like this. They are saying globalization. Globalization, how it has reduced employment employment got reduced in formal sector or in the formal way and then it has increased informalization and what are this impact impact of in informalization so in the introduction you can start with what do you mean by globalization obviously that would be the ideal introduction whoever writes it globalization what it refers to unrestricted movement of people services goods etc so globalization has brought the entire world onto a single platform. Okay. In the body, you will write how globalization has led to reduction in formal employment. How why do you think globalization has reduced the formal employment? What are the drawbacks of formal employment? Because formal employment includes a lot of challenges like, you know, the social security, the PF, the employee health benefits. So these are all costs from the company. So you can say the profit-mindedness, 
profit minded companies try to hire temporary workers okay then the next thing is obviously technology played a part technology got imported and this substituted substituted manpower okay and then there is a lot of outsourcing happening various places which is leading to informal economy and one point which i like which rajni wrote is that many psus are being privatized so when they are being privatized the permanent workforce reduces okay and then many industries are not growing to growing beyond a level and remain micro or small theek hai so these are the points which are globalization which is reducing the formal economy so what is the impact of informal workforce that is the second part of the question so basically impact of informal workforce is they are subject to whims and fancies of company so whenever they want to be hired they will be hired and they will be removed just like that so no job security key security labor laws cannot protect them no social security no social security no social security and then other benefits <laughs> like health okay ltc etc are not applicable payment of payment of wages below the minimum wage level and so on so what are the solutions so reform labor laws digitalization of economy digitalization of economy and uh, and then you can say uh, implementing the uh, there is a pf scheme right like shram portal shram portal shram portal for updation of employee records surprise checks by the labor department okay and then finally skilling the youth in line with modern technologies conclusion you'll write the india has 85% of workforce in informal economy 
which is undesirable as the exact impact of this workforce on GDP cannot be accounted. Hence, government should see that we encourage formalization of our economy for benefit of one and all. Clear? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, can we also add a social audit in the way forward? Social audit, generally these are social audit is for the government schemes, right? For example, for Manrega, you will write social audit. For informal economy, how can you write a social audit? These are the private companies, right? Which are trying to have informal labor or contract labor. How the social audit will help? Clear, Rajni? Yes, sir. If someone is receiving the benefit, if government is asking them, are you getting the wages as per Manrega? That is a social audit. But here, the social audit may not be so useful. That's why we are say, say, saying that government should firstly cut down the complicated laws. Even after that, if someone is not able to implement the labor laws or even a formalized economy, then try to have a surprise check and cater it. Okay. Good. Low wages, inequality. Black economy, this point up to here, it is okay. This point is not required. It is not about black economy, right? You try to relate informal sector with black economy. Okay, I'll give it to you. But then again, you are writing next fact about black economy, not required. Okay, there are sir. Many, many other points which we discussed now that you can write. Okay, sir. Okay. See the last question. Justify the need for FDI for development of Indian economy. First part of the question. Why there is gap between MOU signed and the actual FDI? Second, suggest remedial steps to be taken for increasing the actuals in FDI. Okay, you can see what have you written. Solutions written in 14th and 15th question can be actually the solutions of 16th question. Yes or no? You just take it, take two minutes. I'll tell you. Yeah. See the question. Justify the need for FDI for development of Indian economy. Yeah. Good points. Yeah. So the actual answer will be more or less on the same lines, Rajni. So what is the question they are asking? First is why FDI? Justify FDI means why FDI? First part of the question. And then why there is gap 
why gap between FDI committed by the foreign companies and actual investment and remedial measures, remedial steps. So give introduction, what is FDI? Then in the body, why FDI, why gap, remedial steps, and then conclusion. So this is the framework of the answer, clear? So basically what is FDI? FDI stands for foreign direct investment. Investment, it's a capital investment. It's a capital investment by foreign firms. in India, okay? So in the body you write, why FDI or need for FDI? Need for FDI. What are the advantages of FDI? They bring in latest state of art technologies, state of art technology into Indian uh, market, they bring in huge capital, which also brings a lot of dollars flow into Indian economy. They bring the best practices of industry, of industry, they provide employment to many people. Okay, and then they provide tax revenue to the government. and also improve the international image. So this is about FDI. So first that is why FDI, then, then why there's a gap? So gap, why there is gap? Gap between MOUs and actual FDIs. Why there is a gap between MOU and actual FDI? Obviously structural bottlenecks, structural bottlenecks, issues with delay in approvals, red tapeism, corruption, etc. And then labor loss, you see, again, we are bringing here labor loss issues. Okay, labor loss issues. And then uh, global sentiments, you can say. Global sentiments impact FDI flows. Example, federal policies of USA. And then what could be the other issues for gap? Mm. Ease of doing business, did we write? Ease of doing business issues. Okay. And then few states policies. Lack of skilled manpower. and so on. So what are the remedial measures? That is the next part of the question. So what are the remedial question? What are the remedial steps? So what are the remedial steps? Labor loss reformed, labor loss reform, ease of doing business should be improved, skilling. See these points already we used, national skill development machine, Okay, and then 
says NIMS, which promote tax subsidies, tax subsidies, government help in land acquisition. Okay, and then having FTS with countries for FDI investments showcasing brand India in forums like WEF, World Economic Forum, Davos, Switzerland, and so on. In the conclusion, you can write, FDI is welcome measure in India as it can induce modern technology and create job opportunities. The need of the art is to bridge the gap between MOUs and actuals for which consistency in policy and government support is desirable. Clear? Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. sir, small doubt, sir. Sir, can we conclude that saying uh, increase in FDS can uh, help us in achieving a trillion dollar economy? Yes, of course. See, whatever I'm giving is more model conclusion. If you have a better conclusion, very welcome. That is also a good point you can write. You can write, Mahesh, not a problem. Yes, sir. Um, I'm doing Raghus today, so it's not a method, it is a way. Hmm? Which can be short term. FIIs are definitely short term, but it don't say that they are only short term. Accessing foreign funds means encouraging foreign investors, right? Like this. Raghu, clear? Yes, sir. Accessing foreign funds means we don't want any foreign funds, right? Do, okay. Be careful in writing all these extreme statements. You say issues with labor and contract laws, outdated. Okay. Okay. Unpredictable taxes, no. Issues with corporate tax. Uh, in that solution, you can write reduction in corporate tax also. In remedial measures, you can write that. Okay, sir. <coughs> Not exploit, explore. Okay. It's a decent answer, but Try to see our model answer and try to have uh, compare your answer with that, Raghu. Hmm? Okay, sir.
Okay, so we'll meet tomorrow again.